Hey there, in today's video I'm going to do this, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. I'm making this video because I was at the running show at the NEC in Birmingham where I tried on the Wave Rebellion Pro on the Mizuno stand. I was really surprised by the shoe and was determined to get the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. It's a fiendishly clever shoe and in this video I'm going to show you why. As always this video might be long and warning there's a rabbit hole ahead which you can avoid but there are chapter markers down below so skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. I have lots of questions I'm trying to answer about the shoe. Why are they this shape? Do they comply with the World Athletics regulations? Who are they for? Will I fall over when I run them? All those kinds of things and I'm going to touch on all of those in this video. Here comes the rabbit hole, the World Athletics Regulations. I put a link in the description to the overall link. But in this particular section, we're gonna cover some ground, but it's YouTube. So you can stop, you can rewind, you can slow down as needs be. Moving on from the World Athletics homepage, we look at the Constitution and Book of Rules, which is on one of the tabs. And we go to Book C Competition. And in there, we find C2.1A Athletics Shoe Regulations, Section 10, Tactical Requirements, Athletic Shoes. And down there in page seven and eight, there are simple diagrams. There's a figure A and a figure B, which is a very crude cross section through a running shoe. Section 10.4 contains the accompanying text to explain the diagram A and the diagram B. The most important part really in one sense is that they're picking an EU size 42 unisex shoe and they're measuring points at either end of it so near the heel and near the forefoot the one at the forefoot is 75 percent of the internal length and the one at the heel is 12 percent of the internal length and that works out at being 32 millimeters from the inside back and 203 millimeters from the inside back for either of them now the interesting thing is that they say the thickness of the sole outside of these points is not relevant for the purposes of meeting the technical requirements of these regulations and we we'll come back to that very important point. There's another tab technical information and in there there is a section on athletic shoes in which there are FAQs in which there are technical drawings plans and sections through the shoes in more detail than figure A and figure B. There's still some ambiguities and in my view they contain some errors but they're small we can ignore them and it's much better than the previous diagrams. Now this drawing contains a plan and some sections. And for those of you who don't read a lot of technical drawings, a section is really a slice through something. And if you look at this, well, it's an actual slice through my Carbon X, you'll see exactly what we're looking at, a slice through the sole of the shoe. I've used Photoshop to edit the image for clarity. I've rotated it counterclockwise so that the outsole is sitting flat on a ground plane. I've cleaned it up, removed superfluous details, text, other sections. I've enlarged it for viewing. I've then mirrored it so the heel is on the left of the image and the toe is on the right. I've added a baseline so you can more clearly see the ground plane and I've thickened and extended the lines that World Athletics define the heel and the forefoot of the shoe and I've extended those all for clarity. This is the A6 Metaspeed Sky. I ran Berlin in these and I've overlaid this on the earlier drawing and now I'm gonna slide between them so you can see how this relates to a fairly typical high stack 38 40 millimeter stack carbon plate running shoe and i'll slide the transparency backwards and forwards so you get to see the important points or some of the important points are i've got the flat baseline the toe i've lined up but the heel that you'll see from the technical diagram that it's inside of the heel that the measuring point begins with but yeah you'll see as i slide down between i'll fade between them this is the mizuno wave rebellion pro 2 and i've overlaid it you'll see this in a minute on the A6 shoe. Now the first thing you see as I move the slider is how much taller the shoe is. I'm going to give you the stack height. So the stack height of the A6 Speed Sky Plus is 39 millimeters and it's 38 millimeters for the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. So almost no difference. There's a five millimeter drop in the A6 shoe and you'll be looking at this shoe and <laughs> certainly I did. I thought this has a much more serious drop but it has less of a drop at 1.5 millimeters i've double checked that this is on the australian side i checked out europe in america they say two millimeters on the mizuno site but there's a very 
small drop on the shoe. And as I put the slider through, you're thinking, how could that be? How could it be that this shoe with its giant midsole and angles has less than the other? So we go to that next. The genius of what Mizuno have done is they've rotated the shoe. So I've rotated it here. And if you look at the slider, as I slide through, you'll just look at the top of the shoe. So the top of the shoe is now matching the top of the ASICS shoe and they've got the same end points. And then you look at the base of the shoe. And if we go back to the point where I said, World Athletics only measure at two points, you'll see that how Mizuno have done it is they've made the midsole much deeper in the middle between those two points. And that's how they've created this totally legal World Athletics approved shoe with quite a lot of foam in the base. I haven't had the shoe very long, but I've done some initial testing. I did 30 minutes of running at various paces, including sprinting to get an idea as to the ride of the shoe. Let's put the shoe on the turntable and look at its specifications. Mizuno say that the shoe weighs 215 grams, 7.58 ounces. This shoe is a US 13, EU 47, UK 12, BRA 45, JP 31. In this size, it weighs in the left shoe, 279 grams, 9.84 ounces, and in the right shoe, 281 grams, 9.91 ounces. It has a 38 millimeter stack. It has a 1.5 millimeter drop. Mizuno say this about the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Run sub 2.5 hour marathons and achieve a new personal best with this shoe loaded with speed boosting features. For experienced runners seeking a maximum stack race day shoe with a super propulsive ride. Ideal for race day from 10k up to marathon distance. Super lightweight engineered mesh upper with internal reinforcement offers the perfect blend of breathability and support during your fastest runs. Lightweight G3 outsole reduces weight and increases traction for a grippy and efficient ride. Let's review the shoe and see if what Mizuno says is true. I really like the upper of the shoe. It's very thin. It's, uh, it reminds me of the upper of the Ultra Vanish Carbon. It's really thin. There's some uh, little bit of padding on the heel. Speaking of the heel, you can fold it down. It's um, very flexible in, in, in that sense. The, uh, it's reasonably airy, there's various slots. I'll stick in the, uh, the light and you'll see I also took a video inside in the shoe. But if I, uh, yeah, if you, you can see the ventilation and you can see the structure underneath the shoe in this particular upper. Mizuno say the toe box is half size longer than before. It's narrower than most shoes. Uh, it's slightly more pointy, but it was actually fine by me. I only noticed it because someone mentioned it in the comments. Other than that, probably wouldn't have noticed, but it, uh, I ran fine it without any discomfort. The tongue on the shoe is really interesting in that there's a pass through there and there's two others further up. It's a very thin tongue. I don't really like, these are not my favorite style of laces. They've got little ridges on them. They're not my favorite si style of laces. The, uh, the tongue reminded me of the Vanish Carbon, the, the outer shoe in that if you're not careful, it can roll under itself because there's, there's essentially no structure to it. But because of the wide opening, it's, re it's, it's really simple to avoid that. And um, unusually, there's no second eyelet for those of us who like to heel lock. I don't, but that may be a consideration for you. The midsole is, yeah, well, it's what this shoe is about. There's two types of foam. There's Mizuno's Energy Light Plus and Mizuno's Energy Light to give different densities above and below the carbon plate. But yeah, this midsole is unlike any other World Athletics legal shoe out there. One of the aspects I noticed when I was out running is I was running along and I was thinking, these sound slightly, slightly like uh, horse hooves. And then I began to wonder, and then I thought, well, it is enclosed, this sort of loop of foam around this, that you can see the plate. Perhaps that's something to do with it, but they do make a, yeah, they make a kind of distinctive sound as you go along. Not as distinctive and somewhat unpleasant sounding as the Alpha Flies can be, but yeah, you do hear a resonance from that uh, sort of ring of foam. The outsole of the shoe is unusual in that it covers the entire foam. Usually it's just at the front with a little patch at the back on carbon fiber plate shoes, but on this, it's the full length and the outsole also counts as part of the stack height. I was impressed with the weight of the shoe. Mizuno claimed 215 grams, 7.58 ounces. In my size, UK 12, US men's 13, it's 281 grams or 9.91 ounces. And by way of comparison, that's just slightly heavier than the Fly 3, which is really impressive for the amount of foam in this shoe. The stack versus drop is interesting in this shoe. I mean, it's a 38 millimeter stack and a 1.5 millimeter drop. I've already explained how that came about, but 
I'm certainly much taller in these shoes than uh, any, any others. And uh, when you first see them, you do think, how could this be 38 millimeter stack, 1.5 millimeter drop? But again, these are World Athletics legal shoes. I like the simple design of the shoe, which crazy midsole apart is fairly conventional. It comes in two colorways, white, harbor mist, and cayenne, which is this one. That's the only colorway available at the moment here, but it also comes in a red top and red base called Dubarry, Cranberry, and Black. There's also one interesting detail. There are coordinates on the heel, which actually is for um, Mizuno's offices in Osaka. Because, you know, I kind of, I check that kind of stuff. In terms of sustainability, there is a plant-based carbon-infused wave plate, and the sock liner is made of 90% recycled content. But yeah, it's a step in the right direction. The shoe is incredibly easy to put on. You can open it up really wide, get your foot in without any difficulty. The opening reminded me of the Nike Street Fly, but it, yeah, it opens up really fantastic. None of the wrestling you have to do with a Alpha Fly by way of comparison. So what did I like to run in? Well, when you put them on, there's an extraordinary feeling. You really feel the oomph in the midsole. I typically walk around in shoes first. I walk up and down the stairs and in a carbon plate shoe, particularly say an Alpha Fly, where there's a foot pod, you can feel the spring as you go up the stairs. You can't in these, but boy, when you come down where you're placing your midfoot on the treads, yeah, you really feel the massive difference in the midsole of these shoes. When I started running in the shoes, initially, you know, I'm always worried in a tall stacked shoe that, you know, I'm gonna be wobbling. I wasn't, I found the ride stable in them. I, the more I ran in them, the more I enjoyed and got comfortable just settling into them. You certainly notice not as much spring in the front as you would with a, another typical, say again, the Alpha Flies. You'd certainly notice the four foot spring, but in these, it's all about running and landing on the midsole. In terms of the grip and traction, well, there's the full length outsole. I mentioned it's a lightweight G3 outsole, according to Mizuno, and it's perforated. So you can see through to the white bits of the foam, like any high stack shoe, and particularly one like this one, I wouldn't be doing any tight, twisty turns, but yeah, for marathon running and what it's designed for, yeah, it's fine. The performance of the shoe is interesting. Mizuno say that it's designed for a two and a half hour marathon. Not quite sure why you would pick that, but I find that an odd choice. What I found with the shoe is it's, it's fast, but it's fast because I'm getting the midsole out of it. When I tried to do some sprints and put the power down, I couldn't, couldn't really, I didn't get the same spring, but that's exactly what I'm looking for in this shoe is that when I'm landing mid, mid, midsole, mid race, that I'm getting the energy return, then I can, I can do it out the, the sprinting at the end. If I can get good energy return out of these over the length of a marathon, I'll be perfectly happy. And that's exactly what they're designed for. The shoe costs 240 euro, 250 US dollars, 210 pounds sterling, 360 Australian dollars. And like that, it's relatively inexpensive for a carbon plate shoe. Most cost about 250 dollars or 250 euro upwards. And this, by way of comparison, it's about 10 bucks or 10 euro cheaper than Nike's Vaporfly 3. In terms of the buying experience, there were lots of these available when they finally came on sale in the EU. Certainly a lot more of these available than the aforementioned Alpha Fly 3s. In terms of use case, it's really marathons with midfoot striking, or certainly long distance, 10 miles to marathons, ideally, I would imagine. The, uh, you won't get the benefit of the, the foam in the midsole if you're forefoot striking or heel striking. So yeah, ideal for someone like me, midfoot striking my way through a marathon. To make some comparisons, and in some ways this shoe is incomparable, it's, uh, it's unique in terms of it is world athletics legal. I think that is important to state, but yet has a very thick foam in the middle. Something like the Adidas Prime X is a very high stack, high foam shoe, but isn't world athletics legal. And should you be wanting to run a marathon and stay legal and yet have a lot of midsole foam, this is a shoe for you. Should you buy this shoe? Well, I'm certainly very glad I did. It's it's very hard to describe fully until you actually put it on and feel, feel the rock or feel how high up you are. Certainly when you get running, it is a very comfortable shoe to run in. The more I ran in it, the more I liked it. I'm looking forward to running even more and doing some testing on it. But yeah, if you mid foot strike, you like a high stack, you like a comfortable ride, this could be the shoe for you.
I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you would hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there. That's the right videos. There. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.